During the month of September, the Church asks us to focus on a very important devotion, the devotion to the seven sorrows of the Blessed Virgin Mary. We should think about these sorrows of hers during the whole year, but since it is the month of September now, I want to talk a little bit about this subject today. When we think of Our Lady, we think of, we think of someone with great power and, and unimaginable holiness, the holiest person who ever lived. And we think of her as the Queen of Heaven and as our own spiritual mother who protects us and whom we go to in our needs. And all of these things are true, but we tend to think of her only in that sort of context, as, as someone of great power. And we don't usually think of her as someone who has sufferings of her own. And yet our faith teaches us that she suffered more than any other human being possibly could. And all of her suffering was for us. She was our co-redemptrix, so she offered all of this immense suffering that she went through, not for her own sins, she didn't have any sins. She offered them for us. And really the least we can do in thanksgiving for what she suffered for us is to meditate on them and be grateful to her for what she suffered for us. Since she has told us that, that she very much wants to be devoted to, uh, wants us to be devoted to her sufferings. And certainly in general, this is an important part of, of loving somebody else. If we love someone, we share their joys and their sorrows. And we try to console them in their grief. And since we love Our Lady, certainly as much as we can, this is part of how we do that, by trying to think about and understand her sufferings by meditation and by consoling her by our own love. Now certainly, Our Lady suffered for her whole life and had countless different reasons for, for being sad. But Catholic spirituality has sort of distilled her sufferings into seven particular events called her seven sorrows uh, to help us focus on and understand what she went through for us. And these seven sorrows are the presentation of the baby Jesus in the temple when St. Simeon prophesied that a sort of sorrow would pierce her heart. Then there was the flight into Egypt, the finding of our Lord in the temple, the meeting of our Lord while he was carrying the cross, our Lord's crucifixion, and then also when his heart was pierced with a lance, and the last one was when he was buried in the tomb. There is a lot of literature written about devotion to Our Lady and a lot about her seven sorrows, of course. But one very good source for devotion to Our Lady, under any title, is St. Alphonsus's book called The Glories of Mary. It's really a great uh, manual of Marian spirituality and devotion. He talks about every detail of her life, this, this great saint, including a section, of course, on her seven sorrows. And so I strongly encourage all of you to read this beautiful book during this month of September. And St. Alphonsus goes into detail about each one of Our Lady's seven sorrows. And it's a little bit more than we can cover in one day, so I just wanted to talk about one of them and, and just go through what St. Alphonsus had to say about it. And the one that I chose for today was the third one of the seven sorrows, when Our Lady lost our blessed Lord in the temple and couldn't find him for three days. We meditate on this every time we say the joyful mysteries. It's the fifth one. And St. Alphonsus even says that this one was quite likely the greatest sorrow out of all of the seven, even more than when our Lord died on the cross. And we'll see why he thinks this as we go through this meditation. 
St. Alphonsus says that if somebody is born blind, he doesn't know what it is like to see. So he really doesn't suffer all that much from being blind. Well, certainly he doesn't suffer nearly as much as someone would suffer who was able to see and then lost his sight completely. Because the person who was never able to see doesn't know what he has lost. And he says that it's very similar with people who have no love for God and only love the world. If they lose God and sanctifying grace, they don't care very much. But if someone is pious and loves God and has experienced heavenly consolations, if that person falls into mortal sin, he is very upset because he knows the value of what he has lost. And this thought gives us some idea why of what Our Lady suffered when, when she lost our Lord. Not that she committed any sin, certainly, but she lost his divine presence with her for those three days. We know from the Gospel that the Holy Family went to the temple for their annual visit when our Lord was 12 years old. And on the way back, they didn't realize that our Lord was not with them until they had traveled a whole day's journey. And they realized they had left him behind somewhere. So they both went back to Jerusalem to look for him. And they didn't find him for three days until they found him in the temple. We can hardly imagine the level of anxiety that Our Lady had when she was looking for him. She must have been weeping continuously, St. Alphonsus says. She had lost her greatest treasure, and she didn't know why. And she didn't even know what had happened, how this had been able to happen. And we know, of course, that there is a happy ending to this brief story. But when Our Lady was in the middle of this, she did not know what was going to happen. She didn't know if she was ever going to find her Lord again. And just the thought of that must have been terrifying. And she knew that our Lord was God and he was permitting all of this to happen, but she didn't know why. St. Alphonsus quotes a beautiful verse from the Psalms that King David wrote that applies much more to Our Lady. He said, My tears have been my bread day and night while it was said to me, Where is thy God? And how true this was of Our Lady in a much more literal sense. Most likely, Our Lady did not sleep at all those three days as she was tortured with, with worry and fear and grief. She was weeping all night long for three nights in a row, praying to God to help her find her son. And the reason St. Alphonsus says that this was quite likely the worst of her sorrows was that, first of all, in all of the other sorrows, Our Lady... <coughs> always had our Lord with her, whether they were sorrows during our Lord's infancy or during his passion. She was always in his divine presence, except for this single exception. And that presence of him was always a consolation at the same time, but not in this case. In any suffering or sickness or misfortune in this world, if we offer it up to God in penance for our sins, we can always be comforted that God is with us and is strengthening us. And certainly, of course, Our Lady had sanctifying grace in her soul, so God was present in her soul, but she didn't have that consoling physical presence of Christ with her in this one case. The second reason why this was most likely her greatest sorrow was because she didn't understand what was going on, unlike all of her other sorrows. For example, she understood why our Lord died on the cross for our sins. She understood the prophecy of St. Simeon and the hatred of King Herod and everything else that she experienced. But in this case, she did not know why our Lord had left her and in her humility, 